Today we're going to be talking about building an intranet with SharePoint. My name is Tom Winter from Community Legal Aid Services in Central Northeast Ohio. Today we're going to talk about first what is SharePoint, then we're going to take a tour of our new SharePoint site. Community Legal Aid just launched its intranet site built with SharePoint. And we're going to take a look at the in-depth team features uh, that SharePoint provides, and then we'll take a look at uh, a few installation and configuration notes. First, let's take a look at exactly what is Microsoft's SharePoint. From Microsoft's uh, documentation, there's a little quote, Microsoft Windows SharePoint Services is a versatile technology included in Microsoft Windows Server 2003 that enables organizations and businesses of all sizes to increase the efficiency of their processes and improve team productivity with tools for collaboration that help people stay connected across organizational and geographic boundaries, Windows SharePoint Services gives people access to the documents and information they need. Now that's some nice uh, marketing mumbo jumbo there. Uh, I'll distill that down to some simpler things. The SharePoint is basically an extension to Microsoft Windows Server. Uh, it provides a structured website that helps you to organize and find your stuff. And stuff can be things like documents, pictures, web pages, tasks, appointments, contacts, research, notes, all kinds of things. Uh, it includes lots of fancy features so people can work together on their stuff. Um, and the, the name does say it all. It gives you one point to go to for everything that you want to share with each other in your organization. So to get you a good idea of what SharePoint is, we're going to take you right to Legal Aid Connect. That's the new intranet website, the internal website that uh, Community Legal Aid just launched recently. And here's the home page for Legal Aid Connect. Um, it's a basic SharePoint site. We don't have a whole lot on here yet since we just launched it. We'll take a, a quick tour uh, of some of the things that we do have out there to give you an idea of what SharePoint can do for you. First of all, we have here on our home page, um, we've got the little tabs up at the top that take us to some of the major areas in our site, as well as the, the similar type of navigation down the left-hand side. Uh, in the, the center here is a little uh, custom grid that I put together that also takes you to some of the, uh, the major areas of the site. Um, we've got staff announcements here on the home page um, that regularly update with the new stuff that happens. Um, let's take a look at these staff announcements first. Um, the most recent ones are listed near the top, but we can go click on staff announcements here so we can take a look at all of them. And this will actually go through all the announcements that we've had here for quite a while. All kinds of stuff in there. You can see we put a, put a lot of information in there. Okay. Let's take a look at some of, the, some of the features we have here with our announcements. There's different ways that we can look at the announcements. Right now we've got this uh, kind of preview style here where it shows everything. Um, there's a couple of other styles I showed just so you can get an idea how you can format some things, announcements, little boxes of them. Um, the dynamic preview view is pretty interesting. Uh, you can hover over them and it will show you the... Take a second to load that big one there. Hold on. Okay, that was a big one. Um, and we can also view our, uh, our announcements as, with a calendar view that kind of shows us when a lot of the announcements were published. That's kind of, a, kind of a neat thing. You can go back to last month and see the announcements we published last month, see when a lot of them came out. That's kind of cool. Um, and of course, one thing, we, we allow anybody on staff to submit announcement if they want to. They can just click on this Submit Announcement link, and they just type in a title and what they want their announcement to be about. Um, there are several categories we put together so we can organize um, the announcements if they want to look at them in different ways, which we'll show you in a second. Um, you can, uh, we've, been, we've set everybody up by default to get an alert in their email every week when we send what all the new announcements that are put out. Um, alerts are one of the standard SharePoint features. You can, you can ask it to get an alert for when anything new is posted or when anything changes. Um, and you can have it send you an email immediately every day or every week. We started off with everyone on staff 
getting a weekly summary Monday at four o'clock. They get all the new announcements that were posted uh, for the previous week. Um, and you can also subscribe with uh, an RSS uh, reader as well if you'd like to do that. Just about everything in SharePoint is RSS enabled. These are the two most recent announcements that we have. So we can subscribe to this feed using with your standard stuff with your RSS reader. Um, and of course, we can also search the staff announcements if we want to see some. You know, I, th I think the, the class, you know, talked about this. They announced this recently. Well, uh, but I don't remember when. Just search for that in your announcements. So look just in the announcements uh, for something recent. Um, okay, let's take a look at our calendar. We've got a lot of fancy stuff in here. This is the uh, Legal Aid calendar for everyone. This has all kinds of things on it, as you'll see here. Um, we've got some uh, staff meetings, some clinics. There's some more staff meetings, uh, CLE, um, Summit Teen Court, foreclosure team, Stark foreclosure class. We try to put everything that we do on this calendar so that um, there's one place everybody can go to to see all of the stuff that's going on. Um, and of course, having all of that stuff on there at once, it's, it's a lot of stuff. So we've given various views, different ways to view it, so you, can, you only have to look at certain things. Let's take a look at just the clinics. If we want to see what clinics we offer for our clients, we've got those color-coded by county, since we serve eight different counties. We want to make sure we send people the right stuff for the county that they live in. See, uh, stuff in Summit County is colored red. Stuff in Medina County is colored green. Um, we can take a look if we want to see just staff meetings that are coming up. There's a lot of, got a lot of staff meetings. Um, or just holidays. I think we've only got one holiday here in October. There's Columbus Day. Um, another thing we can do is, um, rather than using the calendar view, we can get a list of all the different events coming up. And we can group them. And here's all the events we have grouped by type. We have six CLEs that are on the calendar. Um, we have 34 clinics that we've got out there. It's a lot of clinics. Um, 10 holidays this year. 34 staff meetings. Let's see. Let's take a look at what one of our clinics looks like in here. Because we've got a lot of information tagged. Let's go in and edit the item so I can see the options a little bit better here. We've got the title of the title of the event, where it's located. We pick what county it in. That, that's important for uh, making sure we know what county uh, we want to send clients to. The type of event, as we were looking at those different views. Uh, useful for clinics is uh, different topics they talk about. Um, if there's a particular team that's responsible for it, we want to type in a description. A couple of options we use for clinics if pre-screening is required or if it's a confidential meeting. Uh, the staff contact, there's an on-site contact. Um, and this is when it is. A lot of our stuff on here are repeating events. And this works a lot like if you're used to repeating events in Outlook, you know, daily, weekly, yearly, all those kind of different options in the times. Um, those are all the, the, major, the major things in there. Let's go back to our calendar. We'll show you some other ways. If we saw those little options that we put in there, like we talked about the type of event, um, again, the clinics by county. It's another grouping of them, the clinics by topic. So we group, we got two consumer clinics that we have scheduled. And we've got three counsel and advice clinics that we have scheduled. So it's a, a lot of different ways to look at what's on the calendar. And just the same way we can do with announcements, we can, um, you can submit an event for the calendar. Anyone on staff can do that. Uh, you can subscribe to the calendar if you want to know when something new is posted to the calendar. You subscribe to having it send you an alert. And you can also use an RSS feed as well. And of course, you can also search on the calendar. Um, let's search for bankruptcy on the calendar and see what we come up with. Let's see, poverty law classes in the Honing Bankruptcy Clinic um, start foreclosure class. So we've got some bankruptcy stuff. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's take a look at our staff directory. One of the other nice things that we put together when we launched our site here. This, this includes all of the people that we have here working at Community Legal Aid and Northeast Ohio Legal Services. It has all of our employees and volunteers and temps and contractors. So it has a picture of everyone so we can know who everyone is. Well, almost everyone. 